everybody. What up, what up, what up? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. You know what that means. Monday motivation chat. Let's get motivated. So for those of you guys that missed last week, we had the lovely Lisa Padilla on here. Uh, she is a cancer warrior and she joined us to tell us about her journey, her fight, um, her experience. Um, and her biggest takeaway was making sure that people stay educated. Um, that was the, the biggest thing that she um, she wanted everybody to do, you know, just making sure that you stay educated, get educated, mm -hmm. um, get checked, um, and don't accept the first thing that you hear, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, inspiring and definitely deep. And um, I feel like we're missing one point. So check, get checked. Mm -hmm. Be an advocate. Do your own research. Um, damn, I feel like there's like there was like a fourth one from her. It'll hit us later. Yeah, it definitely will hit us later. We'll post it in the comments. <laughs> um, and she also hosts um, a weekly chat um, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, called Let's Talk About It. And it's for um, anyone, whether it's um, someone who is fighting cancer, who has survived cancer, has someone who's just been affected by cancer because it's someone that you know, someone who wants to be educated, um, it really is just a forum for everyone to just come together in a safe space. Um, yes, G, they are green highlights. She got a little, uh, <laughs> she got a little wild last week. <laughs> my birthday, you know, remember last week was my birthday. So we tried a new hair thing. We tried a new nail thing, you know, um, it's 32, you know, <laughs> I gotta come in with a bang. <laughs> so without further ado. We will be joined by Jay, Jamil Owens. He is the host of The Awesome Show and co-host of The Ben and Jay Show. We'll be bringing him right now. Jay, what's going on, man? Hey. What's going on? Let me let me fix this. Let me let me let me fix this camera real quick. All right, y'all see that? But God, right? Make okay. yeah, sure we get that up on here. All right, there we go. There we go. What's going on? How are you? Oh man, um, you know, blessed to be here. Uh, happy, excited, um, heavy-hearted um, in some things, but we can we can talk about that in a little bit. Um, but all in all, you know, I keep a smile on my face, man, because I, I, at the end of the day, I know God is good and I know where I was and I know where I am now. So I have a lot to be smiling about. I hear that. Nice. Definitely hear that. Yeah. So introduce yourself to everyone. All right. So uh, as as humble as I could possibly be, uh, my name is Jamil Owens. People call me Jay. I am the host and the creator of The Awesome Show. Um, what that is, is it was a platform that was designed and made by me, um, specifically for fathers of those individuals that are on the autism spectrum. It does cater to mothers, it does cater to caregivers, grandmothers, grandfathers, whoever the case may be. But I specifically made it for fathers because when my son was diagnosed with autism, I found it to be very difficult to process exactly what autism was and how it would have a great impact on my manhood and my life. So going through life and trials and tribulations and, and just learning about my son, which in hand helped me to learn about myself, I wanted this platform so fathers can reach out, they can cry, they can laugh, they can smile, they can hear other fathers that are out there, whether they're white, black, Asian, whatever the case may be, that are going through the same thing so they make sure they know they are not alone. Um, also, too, I happen to be a co-host. Shout out to my, my man, Ben Hartraff. I'm the co-host of the Ben and Jay Show, which is another platform that we do just to make sure that people who are dealing with those awesome individuals on the spectrum are uh, know that they are not alone. Very powerful interviews. 
uh, very powerful panel discussions. Um, so uh, those are my two things. Volunteer Fire Fire, where I'm at. Um, I'm a two-time, about to be a three-time uh, author as far as a autism magazine. I'm just waiting for, for that editorial to come, come back and give the okay for it. So I'm excited about that. Um, a father, a husband, um, just just a man, just trying to, just trying to, you know, just trying to keep up with God, you know, that's mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Love it. So um, many people who don't personally experience um, autism, they have, it's just a label for many people and not many people understand that it is an, a spectrum. Um, and so could you, for those who may not know, could you educate them on, on the spectrum and what that means? Okay, so uh, let's let's look at it as if you are a a person who sees the world in colors every single day when you walk outside, you see the world in colors. So you really don't know what a person is as far as race category, black, white, Asian. You just see them in in, in specific colors, and they attract you. And, and, and once they attract you, you become fascinated with that person and you want to learn more about mm -hmm. that person. Um, this is uh, somewhat close to inside the box of a, a, a person that is on the spectrum. I want to say children and adults because as they grow older, they some of them learn to actually vocalize their, uh, their understanding of who other people may be other attitudes, things like that, along with different therapies. But they look at the world in a totally different way than what we look at it. What they solely depend on is not your looks, um, not even your attitude, but your heart. And you can probably say, well, Jay, how can someone see my heart if I have an attitude? Is because deep down they know that you have a distinct feeling of love. Whether that be for, you know, them or someone, they know that you love and you have loved and they drive that out of you. That's that's really how I can actually characterize these amazing individuals on the autism on the autism spectrum. That's awesome. That's deep. That is, yeah, that yeah. Is, that is very I, I never never looked at it that way. Right. Or, yeah. I didn't know. That's yeah, and I think so. Eric's nephew, um, as we talked about, is on the spectrum, and I mm -hmm. feel like with that little bit of insight would change um, our interaction with him. Yeah. Right, because when you feel like someone can feel your heart, mm -hmm. right, like it's totally different. And he's very affectionate. Very, yeah. very affectionate. Mm -hmm. Um. So my, for those that don't know, um, my nephew is nonverbal. Um, and. Uh, he he's fourth fifth, fifth no he's 15 16 16 oh my goodness 16. really yeah, he's 16 oh thanks. <laughs> I, was, I was just talking about him the other day yeah he's 16 <laughs> um yeah and uh it's it's crazy cuz when you see him and you interact with him um he doesn't act like he's 16 you know um and he's mm -hmm. very um very loving, um, very, very energetic. Um, but it's a little bit scary, you know, because of the fact that um, he's very big um, mm -hmm. and he's very hands-on, touchy-feely, wants to hug and everything. Yeah. Um, and sometimes he could be a little overpowering, even with his mother. Um, and it's not because like, he's even done it to um, Julie before where like he tries to hug and everything and it's just like it becomes kind of a, a lot uh, and a little everything that's going on in the world today, um, that can be scary because people don't know how to handle that. And we are already seeing stories of, of things like that happening, you know? And so it's, it's definitely uh, a fear for the family of, you know, what happens beyond, you know, school, you know, what happens mm -hmm. when the world world, you know, comes. Right, because right, he's so close to being, you know, what society <laughs> would label as an Adele. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and going out into the real world and ideally he would be as independent as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm glad you guys brought that up because just like we discussed before um, and the audience may not know is that when you see a particular individual 
who is on the spectrum, give and take my son Shane, who's 12, you have to subtract two years because their mental status is not as of age to their body. So every time you meet someone that's on the spectrum, please subtract two years from their actual age and you will begin to see exactly where their mindset is at. Now, it's not saying that they're not intellectual. They are very intellectual. They're actually a little bit more smarter than me and you. But as far as their social skills, that, that uh, you know, vulnerability is that of a younger person. Now, also, too, I want to let you know and also other parents out, out there know IEPs, which is the Individualized Education Programs, are very important. Yes, they are a substantial report card for your child when you're dealing with that uh, person on the spectrum or a learning disorder. But you may not know that you can actually request social skills within that IEP. An example, uh, knowing a person's physical space, knowing how to greet a person and actually view their face, whether they're happy, whether they're sad. These are things that that educator at that school can actually work on if it's placed in an IEP. So this is very important, especially yeah. to the men. The fathers out there, I need you guys to go to these IEP meetings. I need you to be vocal. I need you to step up in this case because you are the, you're supposed to be the breadwinner. You're supposed to be the head of household. You're supposed to be the leader. You have to lead when it comes down to this. And if the father's not there, then ladies, unfortunately, you will have to be that person. I don't need to say it because every mother pretty much goes, you know, guns out blazing for their child, especially of those awesome mothers that I personally know, and even mothers that uh, have children that are not on the spectrum. But you can have that particular skill set placed on an IEP and practice in school, and you can practice at home, therefore helping the child with these social skills as they get older. Just keep that in mind. What that's would actually, you that's what um. Oh, one of so our Tria, Tria is one of our, our good friends, um, and she said she's actually a teacher. She deals with um, children on the spectrum. Um, so that's shout that's out to you. Thank you, thank you for your service. That's that's big. We need that. Moms that go to the meetings. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And this is, you know, it's a sad truth because, uh, you know, once again, when hearing that diagnosis of autism. I became selfish in the fact where I didn't, I wanted that restart button. I wanted to leave and start over life and have a child that's not on the spectrum. So a lot of these meetings, I didn't know how to be a father, if that made sense. It, it, it was, to me, I was embarrassed and I'm, I'm afraid to say it, but I gotta be transparent because there's a father out here that's going to watch this or that's watching this right now. I, I would not go to an IEP meeting. I wouldn't go to anything that had to deal with my son because I wasn't through dealing with my feelings first. And that's a very, very, very hard thing to do. But what hit home, amongst other things, was actually going to my first one and all of his therapists and teachers looking at me like, okay, who is this? You don't want to be like that in that situation. It is the most bar embarrassing, non-fulfilling emotion that you can have, that you have been an absent parent in your child's growth for all that time. To the, to the fact that when they were speaking at the table, it wouldn't made any, it wouldn't have mattered if I would have got up and walked out because I was so out of the loop on everything that had to do with my son, his growth, his understanding of certain uh, subjects, his love for certain subjects, I didn't even know. Fellas, gentlemen, I do not want that for you. Please, whatever the case may be, make sure you are there. You are announced, you are present, and most importantly, that you are listening and paying attention when it comes down to these meetings or anything that has to do with your awesome child. Why do you think that that's something that's so um, common when it comes to the men, um, the fathers out here? Um, why, why, do you, why do you think that, or, or you know, from your own experience, you know, what was it about the situation that, uh, that made it so difficult to you, you know? It's ego. It's just ego and pride. That's, that's the two biggest things. Um, once again, you know, a lot of men, you know, want to be that alpha male, that macho man, 
literally do they not know that being an alpha man and being that macho man is a man of compassion, uh, a man of integrity, a man of, of understanding. You know, once again, we, we have, we have a, a good role model. We can get into that all day, but he teaches these lessons inside the Bible, but yet not too many of us actually pay attention to it because we are scared to fall into that accountability. Yeah, you can sit there and preach. I can preach to you all day, every day. I can I can sit there and, and, and tell you that God is good, but am I being accountable for myself? And that's where we lack at. For, so going back to the focus of the children, when we have a child, we want our children to be that, that you know, that, that what is called normal, you know, that promising mm-hmm. prospect when it comes to sports and, and growing up and, and being handsome or being beautiful if it's a girl and, and, and just being normal in, in the eyes. And, and I always said this, what if we are the ones that are actually abnormal and those right. children are the ones that are normal? Have we ever sat there and thought about that? You know, um, it, it's a whole ego thing. And, and once again, it, it, you have to die to yourself. And it's, it's, it's amazing how the formula that has been placed, the fundamentals that have been placed in the Bible is the same fundamentals that you need to love these children, that they actually show you the same type of love as was placed in the Bible. It's amazing. Once you understand that, you'll be able to love on them. You'll be able to love on others. You'll be able to let go of all the past hurt and pain that might be in the way of you also being an absolute amazing father or even amazing mother. You'll just let it go. Mm-hmm. How do you feel like things um, that the transition came about uh, when you were able to get over that hump um, and continue forward and and just kind of change the way that you looked at life, looked at your son, looked at the situation. Um, and from that point on to, you know, creating the awesome show and going through that entire um, situation, like what, what was, what was that next step in that journey? And, um, you know, could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I'm reading one of the comments here was this, I am Miss CEO. I also believe that sometimes men take, uh, what does it take uh, for granted the role of mom, the she got it thought process, but what some men don't realize is that the children are waiting for dad to be present. That is absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, um, shout out to you, Miss, uh, I am Miss CEO. 100%, I was, if, if you want to be honest, I was a piece of crap. I was not there. We, we could be dead honest. Um, I, I was not present. Um, I had that mentality as in, oh, well, she got it. She can take care of him. She knows how to handle this better, but who's going to be there for her? If I stepped up and at that time, me and his mother was married and I said, hey, I'm her partner. I'm her backbone. I'm her her leader. I'm the one who's supposed to guide her and she's supposed to guide me too. We're supposed to go in this hand in hand. And this was, this was an actual promise that I made to her after the diagnosis and I completely failed it. As soon as we left out that car, after hearing about it, I completely failed. Who am I? Am I really a man or am I just a boy in a man's situation? I was that boy in that man's situation. So that was the issue. We, we too often say, oh, well, the mom got it. I know she's a good mother. She'll take care of my child. But what about you? Do you know that statistically right now, because of fathers leaving the household for one reason or another, there are children that are failing in life, failing in understanding and guidance out here. And unfortunately, it's going to be the streets or it's going to be some other negative uh, uh, reality that's going to hold our children. Do you want that same thing to happen for your child that may be on the spectrum? It's going to be detrimental. And and. I don't want to get too much off your question. I, I'm coming back to your question, but I, I, I got to tell you, you know, I, I have seen, I've heard mothers crying on the phone. I have seen posts on Facebook of mothers saying, I am done. I can't do this anymore. And, you know, you got to sit there and just realize one moment, well, where's the father at? Does he feel the same way? Did he feel the same way at one point and just said, oh, that's it. I want to give up. Why are we doing this as men? Why are we really doing this? So it's a question. It's a question for you guys. Def- definitely think about this. What happened with me um, when I realized this, it, it, it goes on a more spiritual level for me personally. 
Um, I was pretty much uh, <laughs> drugged through the mud um, because of the divorce, um, which I'm not saying is totally 100% due to autism. But when you add life, when you add hurt, guilt, betrayal, um, lies, deceit, and then you put on the top, my child is on the spectrum, that's a, that's a dish for disaster. And I didn't have the right people in my circle. I didn't have the right mind state. I didn't have the right heart to actually understand that. I took that out on my family at that time. Um, what changed for me is when God came into my life and broke me down, just completely broke me down and took me down to almost nothing. And the one person who never changed the direction of how they looked at me was Shane, my son. He never looked at me any type of way. He smiled. He called me daddy. So when the, when I actually picked up this book, because I didn't have nobody else but God to get on my knees and ask for forgiveness, when I looked at this book and read about the love that he gives to each and every one of us, if we received it, I looked and I said, oh, my God, that's shame. The whole time that I've been such a jerk and been out here doing me on the streets and saying, oh, well, she got it, man. And, you know, I can I can just restart my life. God was giving me that angel in the form of this awesome individual, this little superhero. He was giving me him, his portion in this person. And I said, yo, I I, I I got to I got to keep this love around me. I got to grow. And Shane just kept on building me and filling me and 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 letting me fail. But every time I failed him, he always greeted me with a hug. That gave me the strength to get back up and keep on going. And he did the same thing. If I got a new job, Shane got all straight A's. If I sat there and got a new car, Shane got a student of the month. If I sat there and, and you know, was able to sit there and get a raise at my job, Shane sat there and made 20 new friends. Whatever I do, Shane was right there doing something even greater, which pushed me even more. We can't miss out on these awesome children. We can't. So many lessons in these individuals. So a, shout out to my man, Ben. He's right here right now. That's an amazing guy right there. 22-year-old man who knows how to drive. He's on the spectrum, knows how to drive. He has his own job. He sits there and he has his own show, which he reaches out to other individuals on the spectrum. And he makes sure that the world knows about them. Go ahead, Ben. Go ahead, Ben. (laughs) What tree you say? Is that tree? No, that's uh, Cass. Okay. So Cass said, I realize this about kids on the spectrum, but include kids with social and emotional behavioral issues. I'm an educator in the alternative education program, and maybe 2% of men show up. Mm-hmm. And that, that's that's true. So let's let's be real. Let's be real. When you say that is we're not dealing with men. We're not dealing with men. We're dealing with boys and men's situations. I was there. I was that boy who thought I was a man. So now what we got to do is we got to get individuals. And once again, I'm not trying to sit there and make it say that I'm perfect because I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. And, you know, I'm just following God's heart. But men like me and, and, and once again, Men like me to step up and talk to these brothers, which I, I've been doing and I have no problem with. I will give you my phone number, my email address to any man that want to reach out to me. Whatever the case may be, we could talk and we could chop it up for you to get better. That's what we need. You know, we often sit there and say, oh, well, yo, that's my brother and he got my back. And, you know, your brother will sit there and look out for you. But how 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 far is looking out for you? Will he tell you when you're really doing right or wrong? Will he tell you like, yo, dog, you got to go back to your family. You know, mm-hmm. your kids need you. Will you w- would he be able to do that? And then also, too, the accountability goes on that man. Like, wh- what are you doing? Like, what are you doing out of life? Do you know that you're missing the most beautiful part about life? You know, watching a person, a, a little human being grow up to be something like you, and especially for those fathers that have, you know, the daughters that's on the spectrum. Oh my God, they're they're amazing princesses. They're 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 beautiful angels and they have to be there. You know, I yo, listen, I could go on and on about <laughs> my mistakes, you know. <laughs> I love your passion behind yeah, it. It's amazing. Um, and you know, everybody has to be that role that that grows from concrete. 
Um, that's our, mm -hmm. that's, our, that's where our superpowers come from. That's where our testimonies come from. Um, and with that, right, we have, we have our journeys so that we can learn and impart the knowledge that we learn so that others don't have to take as long to get to that exactly. point, right? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it almost feels like it's too late, you know, like, sometimes, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a shame. So what would you tell to other fathers so that they don't take as long to get to the point where you realize the role that you needed to play? Uh, if, if this was me and, you know, sending a time capsule back in, in, into time, I, I would tell them, listen, first off, you're not strong enough. I don't care how much you go to the gym. I don't, I don't care what you think you could do. Physically, you're not strong enough, all right? You need to be saved again. You need to die to self in order to love others, most importantly, this child. You need to open up. Whatever past pain that you have, whatever regrets that you have, lay it at his feet. Lay it at God's feet and just tell him to take it away. Let him, let him open up your heart, your senses in order to love. That's the first thing. The second thing is you got to realize that this person that you are raising right now needs to be better than you. And I say this because they need to carry on this species, you know, human beings. They need to carry on, you know, the, the next level of love, the next level of growth for the generation and the generation to come. They need to be better than you. So all of that that you've been through, you have to basically give them a manual of how to live their life righteously. You're not strong enough to do it on your own. You have to find a spiritual ground in order to help that particular person through this. And that's your child. Mm -hmm. Man up. Man up. Stop stop sitting there and, and, and saying that you're a man, but you're doing boy moves. Man up. You yeah. gotta be you gotta be real with yourself. You're out here, you know, you're hurting, you know, you're hurting women, you're hurting family members, you're hurting everybody. And you, and you think you're just trying to, you know, do you and, and go through life. You're just trying to move and shake and you're trying to get over on people. That's not going to do nothing but hinder your growth in the future. If I can tell you that right now so you can be on the righteous path, I'm telling you this right now. Take my advice. I've been down there. God's been gracious enough to stop me in my tracks. Not once, not twice, but three times. The same situation got me to my knees where I was about to lose everything and I lost everybody around me. I sat there and I watched my mom pass away from cancer in front of me. Mm. Three months left. I found her. She was homeless on the streets. I spent the last three months with her and she died in front of me. Wow. She died in front of me. But what she told me was before she passed away, she showed me her certificate, which she gave her life to Christ. So she can make sure that she is going to greet me on that day when it's my turn to go to heaven. And I will be up there. And what I will leave here for my son and every other man around here is a paper trail for them to continue to grow and try to get their life together now. Don't wait. Don't wait. That's deep. That's deep. It's amazing. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> Rich it, it. Nah, nah, nah. A lot of a lot of pain, a lot of pain, a lot of struggles. But you know what? If you look at my pictures back then and you look at pictures now, I smile a whole lot more. I got a lot to smile about. So I'm 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 blessed. I'm definitely blessed, you know. It's it's unfortunate. I feel like um we all have that similar story that like we basically we have to like get smacked in the face in order to kind of grow up, you know? And it sucks that that's the way that we we grow and we learn, but it's I don't know if it's just human nature. I mean, think of working out, right? We got to beat up the muscles and break it down in order to build it back up. And yeah. um, when I guess when you don't have that struggle, you take everything for granted. You know, there's no growth. You know, you, you won't know what growth is. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's insane that uh, – I'm I'm happy. I'm 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 blessed and I'm honestly happy to have met you. Um, to be having this conversation with Me you. Too. You could Me still too. be where you're at. You just could, you know, you could you could have not grown. You could have still been where you're yeah. at and not had these yeah. experiences. So that's that's amazing. And and through this and through your journey and through your growth, you created the awesome show, correct? Yes. Yes. So can you go into yeah. a little bit about how you created that and um the purpose of the show? <clears throat> so I started off with uh 
I wanted to show that I can be that dad. So I, I started off by doing um, a team for my son, uh, Team Shane and Friends. And the shirt said, I'm not autistic, I'm awesome. So it was it was something that I had. I think I got a shirt around. No, I don't. I think I had a shirt around here. It still had the shirt. But I made up the slogan by myself. I, I sat there and, and sold the T-shirts, and, and I had wristbands and everything. And people were so amazed and supportive that I was able to raise over 2500 for the uh, the Autism Speaks um, Autism Walk Challenge for Team Shane and Friends. I did that by myself. It was amazing. I was like, great, but there's got to be more. You yeah, know, next? there's got to be something else I could do. And um, I sat there and was like, okay, what can I do that will make an impact? What can I do that will bring my character out more than what people know me as? And mm -hmm. I got an opportunity to do a couple interviews for um, online radio shows. Um, DJ Spontane, shout out to my man, DJ Spontane, Chuck Belafonte. They had a show um, and I was on their show also with a, a very good friend, a mother of a nonverbal uh, boy. Her name is Mia. Um, Xavier is the boy's name. Shout out to them. And, and we were on there. I never met this girl in my life. I just hit her up on Instagram was like, hey, I know you're an awesome mom. I would love to have you as like a co-host with the show with me. We got on the show. We kept on doing some some shows on other people's uh, platforms. And then I was like, I think it's time for me to have my own platform. So I got in contact with someone. I did my own online radio show. It was online radio and, and just was just barreling away. I, I created everything from the script uh, to the playlist. The playlist was uh, all Christian hip hop music, old school you know, I try to keep it as as family friendly as possible. Um, the guests coming on, I booked all the guests. Uh, all the interviews were done by me. It was my time to show my creative ability. And the most rewarding part was I got to bring my son into the studio with me on, uh, I think it was about just about all of the actual recordings. And it was amazing for him to actually see me doing it. And for him to get on the microphone and speak about trains, he loves trains. And it was just our, our connection and our bonding, but it was just for him to understand that I am for him, for who he is. And I support everything that he does. You know, that was the most amazing part about it. So, um, you know, I moved outside of Philadelphia, so I had to stop uh, doing that. But then, you know, doing the Ben and Jay show, I was like, you know, I was reminded, my wife was telling me, everybody was like, you need to start the awesome show back up. And I was like, yeah, I need to start the awesome show back up. So along with the Ben and Jay show, now I'm doing interviews on the awesome show page. Uh, a lot of different series. You know, I just started one series about brokenness, just people just getting on here, including myself, just talking about our brokenness, trying to help other people, let them understand that they're not alone that people have been through it and people have seen, you know, the other side, the light to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just been a blessing. I mean, my creative juices are flowing like every single day. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Montgomery County um, police departments um, within Montgomery County. I had the opportunity with Ben. We are now teaching police officers about those individuals on the spectrum. And it starts there. You know, thank you, thank you, thank you. On that, I wasn't sure we could talk about it, so I was yeah, hoping we you. Talk, would... We can talk about it. We can talk about it. I'm, yeah. I'm working right now with uh, Representative State Representative Ty Stevens, me and Ben. Shout out to them over there at the office. We're going to be influencing more of these uh, county jurisdictions as far as police departments. Um, did I forget Philadelphia? No. I want to talk to Philadelphia police officers. I know a lot of them. I know a lot of them, but you got to take baby steps. So instead of me sitting there and, and sideline hustling and saying, oh, you know, this is not right and everything, I'm in the trenches. You know what? I'm out here. And you know what? You need to be in the trenches too. You know, it doesn't take anything to sit there and go to a police station and just be like, hey, I would like to talk to somebody in charge. 
about my son or my daughter being on the spectrum, about all individuals being on the spectrum. I would just like to educate you guys so that there won't be any disruptions out in the street with them. It takes only just a one, two people, you know? Um, so I'm blessed to be doing that and I'm looking forward to continuing to do more. Uh, there's a men conference coming for uh, Philly Autism. That's going to be actually on my birthday week, November 9th to 13th. I am a guest speaker with one of the uh, leading physicians for autism at Drexel University. So that is a very, very big thing that I'm looking forward to. Uh, we we'll be chopping it up. Huh? We may be able to meet you in person then. Well, listen, it, it's all good. Listen. We can meet up. We can have some coffee. We can chop it up. You know, you know, Philly back to fifty percent capacity, so it's going crazy right now down there. <laughs> everybody, everybody's out down there. They don't know how to act right now. You know, no, you know, COVID, COVID is non-existent right now in Philly. You know, shout out to everybody in Philly. I love y'all. I miss, I miss being down there. You know, what you got? That is great. That is great. Uh, oh man. Um. So you've mentioned uh, the Ben and Jay show, and Ben uh, is Ben still on here? Uh, you know that man is still on here. I know he probably still on here. He probably he's somewhere. He's probably so, listening. So why don't you tell us about how you guys linked up and, and how that uh, the whole Ben and Jay show came up? Ben, Ben, Ben. You know, once again, Ben, aka the mayor, up here. Um, you know, just everywhere. He's just a man. You know, um, Ben was actually a guest on the awesome show. Um, my friend who later became my girlfriend who later became my wife actually just said, Hey, you need to put this kid on your show. He's phenomenal. He's all that. You probably know him. I'm sitting there like, um, I, I don't know him. So she sent me a clip. He was on Ellen. So I was like, yo, this kid was on Ellen. I was like, yo, there's no way he's going to do my show. Like from Ellen to me, that's a very large gap. No way he's going to do it. So she reached out to uh, his mom, Sandy. Shout out to Sandy and Glenn, his mom and dad. And um, she put me in touch with Sandy and I just told her what I was about. I said, you know, I'm a father uh, of an awesome child, you know, and to have, um, you know, Ben and Glenn on the show would be a, a blessing to me just to get a perspective of, uh, you know, another father raising an awesome child and also a perspective from an awesome child who is now an awesome adult. Um, so they agreed to it, wrote the questions up. He came on, recorded the interview, killed it. It was an amazing interview. And ever since then, we just stayed in contact. We just made sure we stayed in contact. Um, you know, I consider him like my brother. You know, he's, he's teaching me every day. I'm teaching him. And um, during COVID, I got furloughed from my job. So I wasn't working. And at, in the midst of this, you know, everybody was, you know, running or taking care of self. And I'm sitting there like, yo, I got to do something. Like, I can't just be doing stuff for myself. Um, and he called me up at the same time, was like, yo, I want to start a show. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. I was just thinking about doing something. So how you want to do it? So we started up the show, the Ben and Jay show. He works um, at Access Services, which is a it's a nonprofit organization that helps families in eastern Pennsylvania, mainly 11 counties, um, help them to find services and support for their awesome child and also for family members dealing with that. Um, okay. So he was like, Jay, we want you to come on board, work with, you know, our access services, the Ben and Jay show. And, you know, we can make this totally like a package deal. And we've been doing that um, since the beginning of COVID, since the beginning of COVID, we've been doing that. Um, we've had a lot of amazing people on and, you know, once again, the growth and the development of the show has, has grown to develop me, Ben, um, everybody, but most importantly, you know, we've, we've touching, we're touching lives. We're touching people. We're bringing up those topics that a lot of people are too scared to actually, uh, speak about. And you know what, just to be blunt about it. Yes. He's a Caucasian male. I'm an African-American male. You know, I love him like my brother. Right now, I think the world needs to see that. You know, not only of a, a, a individual that's living on the spectrum and then a father, but also two or two different races that are just working together to kill the hate that's in the world and still, you know, yeah. try to try to bring it like Christ-like. Just try to be Christ-like. Show that love and, and let people know that it's okay to be different. You know, I think we need that right now. So the show is doing good. You know, the show is doing amazing. 
Um, it, it, is, it is a lot. It's a lot of work. But you know what? At the end of the day, it is rewarding to see how many people are being, you know, uh, just influenced by it, you know? So uh, the Ben and Jay show just got started recently within the COVID months. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. Um, yep. Since the beginning of COVID. When does it uh, go on? Okay, so the Ben and Jay show, we do it right now uh, through webinar. So it's every Friday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Um, we have a webinar link on my show, which is the awesome show. Um, normally put it up about Wednesday. And what you do is just basically click on a link and you'll sign up, you'll register for it. And then on Friday, you could join us on this webinar. We have the guest on. We allow you to actually ask questions. Um, on our shows, we normally give away prizes too from a lot of our sponsors. Um, okay. So it's 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 a real good thing. I mean, we've had people that you wouldn't believe that I wouldn't believe, but we had those guests on. So it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing. Um, the awesome show, me personally, um, my platform started just all about all, all, um, autism, mm -hmm. but then what it grew into was just empowering men just to change their life, just to do better, whether they're fathers of children on a spectrum or not. Um, I've had amazing guests from uh, Christian uh, rap artists, shout out to Three. Um, he's part of the Infantry Group, uh, Show Baraka I've had on there. I have Tone Spain, shout out to Tone Spain for being on the show as well. I've had theology, Christian theology professors on my show speaking about um, just about just Christianity and about belief systems. Um, shout out to my man, Joseph Rao. That's like my brother. He's a pastor uh, down in Ocean City, New Jersey. Um, we just chopped it up about some real questions, you know, just talking about, you know, like one question, why should I believe in God? You know, and he answered it. When you look at that interview, you'd be like, yo, there's no way this brother is a pastor. He is a full blown pastor. You know what? But it's, it's you got to remember is that in the Bible, if you don't read the Bible, if you understand just a little bit, remember that Jesus never came in Gucci never came in Fendi, never had no J's on or nothing. He was the son of a carpenter. His, his clothing was very, very frail, very meek, very normal. When people invite you to church, please get this misconception that you got to be in your Sunday's best. Jesus will take you as you are. So if you want to come in your J's, if you want to come in your, your, your fly hoodie or anything like that, then come. The purpose is, is for him. He doesn't care what you're wearing. You know, none of that matters in a day. So don't let that discourage you like you don't have anything to wear. You know, I felt that way when I started going to church. It, it's, it's the fact. Jesus just loves you for who you are. Um, but my show is a little bit different from the Ben and Jay show um, because it's a little bit more personal. It's like my baby. I'm, I'm birthing it. Um, but, you know, it all works together. It's all about love. You know, Ben and Jay, the awesome show is about love. It's about exposing autism to the community letting them letting the people know about love and how it is to love an awesome individual and then it's just about empowerment you know the same thing as you guys you guys are doing the same exact thing so you know we on your heels we on your heels <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to say. we actually have a question here from uh, lisa who was our guest last week um, okay is who can support how can someone support parent how can someone support parents who are still in denial? Huh. Um, I, I would say the first thing is letting that parent or parents know that is neither one of their fault. You know, this has nothing to do with who fault it is. This is this is a blessing. You have to make them see what this blessing is. You know, it, yes, it's hard. You know, it, it's something difficult. It's not easy. But just letting them know that it's nobody's fault that they are not alone. Very, very key sentence. You are not alone because a lot of parents feel as though they are isolated. Their child can't mingle with other children. They can't go to birthday parties. They can't do all the things with other parents um, because their child is on the spectrum and that's not true. And, and the, the key thing is learning about autism. Learn, you know, learn what stemming is. Learn with, you know, what ABA is. Learn with IEP is. Learn about different medications that can be taken for a child. There's nothing more powerful than knowledge. 
You know, once you equip yourself with that, you can beat anything. So those are the three factors. You know, when people reach out to me and they're like, hey, you know, I find your show inspirational. Thank you. The first thing I tell them is, yo, I love you. You don't know me from a can of paint, but I love you. The reason why is because you're my brother, you're my sister. We're all in this together. The second thing I, I let them know is that this is not your fault. Don't go pointing your fingers. And then the most important thing, especially for the men, once again, is do not leave your kingdom. You have a fight. You guys are not seeing eye to eye right now. You have that beautiful child that's in the middle of that. Do not leave your kingdom. You can leave the room. You can go sleep on the sofa. But do not leave your kingdom. The reason why is because when you leave your kingdom, you allow the devil to come in and wreak havoc all in everything that you built. Do not do that. So what you need to do is, man, if you need to sit down and go downstairs and just try to write down your feelings and everything, do so. I, I offer anybody to contact me. I don't need to know you. What I need to know is what your feelings are and what you think is the right, because I'm going to tell you what the right way is. I'm not going to give you what it is. I'm going to tell you what the right way is. But you just got to have good people in your corner. You have to. So if you're a person that comes across an uh, awesome mom or dad and every day seems like a struggle with life, let them know you love them. Let them know you love them and you want to see nothing but happiness and let them know that that child is beautiful, regardless of what the world says. That child is beautiful. Oh, those are those are my key points for you. Love it. That's good. That's, Love that's, it. That's, yes, that's that would be everybody saying preach. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a preacher. Far from it. I just I just have a I, I have some some real good strong brothers. <laughs> this is my wife. I have I have a lot of people that's you know just just there you know just there and, and been building me up, man. And and you know what? I'm just. I'm I'm happy because I could have been down a very, very wrong road. I was angry at everybody. What happened to my mom? Angry at everybody. Angry at God. What happened to my son? Angry. I didn't even want to be his father. I wanted to just be like, no, nah, that ain't my kid. I really did. And it hurts to say that, knowing how amazing he is now. But thank God that he pulled me out of that and was just like, you got to be here. And and the, And the funny thing is, is that this world will chew you up and spit you out for anything that they don't like. Mm -hmm. And I have been chewed up and spit out time and time again. And I keep getting up and I keep pushing forward. I I'm telling you that when my mom passed away, that almost knocked me out. But I also thought about there are a million other mothers out there that are going to pass away. Then there's going to be somebody that's going to be right there at that ledge, just like how I was. And they're going to need somebody to pull them off. And that's going to be me. If I can be there, that's going to be me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's dope. That's dope. Bro. As we uh, start to wrap up, if there's anything, like, what do you, what do you want everyone here to take away from all of this? Um, so some key points you want everybody to take away from. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to leave it. It's a, it's about love, but I'm going to leave it with this, something that's really been bothering me today. I'm going to read a quote, and this is from Andrew Murray. It's called Humility, and it's The Journey Towards Holiness. That's the name of the book. This is his quote. Humility is the displacement of self by the, excuse me, humility is nothing but the disappearance of self in the vision that God is all. Remember that. Today I was at work. And I'm driving during, through West Philly. And I swear to God, I, I'm driving, driving, and something told me to look to the left. And to the left, I seen this woman on her knees crying with teddy bears at this pole, obviously because somebody passed away. And I sat there and I looked at her and my heart just ached because I wanted to get out the car and just be like, ma'am, I understand. Let, let, me, let me pray for you. Let me pray with you. And everybody else around me was just doing their own thing. Nobody recognized this woman was in pain. So much pain that I had my radio playing and I could hear her cries. I could hear her. And this is just today. What are you doing to love, push, and motivate others? You was placed on this planet for a bigger purpose than what you realized, than what I realized. I wanted to be a cop. I'm not a cop. 
You know what I am? I'm a volunteer fighter fighter. You know why that's important to me? Because up in this area where they don't see African-American fighter fighters, I must stay on there. Why? Because I must protect this community because I live here now. For two, I must let them know that we are no different than anybody. We are all one. We work together as a one unit. So this is my mission. This is beyond anything that I can possibly want for my own. This is for my family. This is for your family. This is for your children. This is for everybody. But what is your purpose? You're not going to understand your purpose because you always want something. But God wants something better for you, but you got to give him control. Take it from me. I wanted to be a cop. I'm not a cop right now. I'm on this talking to you guys. I've never been a public speaker. I've done every job under the sun, but I've never been a public speaker. Yet you would never think, that I have never spoken in public before in my life. Yes. Why is this? Why is this? Discover your purpose. Die to self. Discover your purpose. Your purpose is always to help someone else. If that's your man, bro, and y'all at the bar, and you know he's married, and it's a nice looking girl that's coming that's flirting with him, that's your man. Make sure he goes home to his wife. Make sure he stops that conversation. If that's your girl and you know she got a got to do that home and, and she's sitting there flirting with somebody that looks good, make sure she goes home to that man and appreciate each other. If that's your people's like that, make sure you do that. It's too many people saying, oh, that's my man. That's my person. That's my bull. That's my girl. But they not really there for you. They there to watch you die. Mm. That's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, anybody needs to talk to me, you can email me. I'm going to put up uh, the awesome, let me make sure, uh, at gmail.com. That's my email. All right. You can email me at that. You know, the, the page show is the awesome. I'm terrible at this right now. Hold <laughs> up. Let me say. All right. That's my page show. DM me, DM me, you know, whatever the case may be, let's chop it up, you know, um, mothers, fathers, whatever the case may be, you're having a difficult time, I'm going to be transparent and I'm going to be real with you, I've been through a lot of stuff, stuff that you have not heard, you know, but we're not going to talk about that, what we're going to talk about is the goodness, the grace, you know, the ability to keep on, I've been blessed. I've been I've been solely blessed and I'm going to help you understand and see those blessings, too. Uh, there's a quote I love so much. Lord, I promise not to leave a gift unturned or something along those lines. Yo, facts. Glimpse of Jess. Facts. Listen, uh, listen, our awesome kids on the spectrum are gifts. Individuals like you guys doing the show are gifts. You know, I have a gift of speaking. Ben has his gift of speaking. You know, everybody plays an important part is if you see it right, right now, everybody is so lost because everybody is just worried about themselves. I get it. You got to take care of yourself in order to take care of other people. Well, how about this? Remember that Jesus came. He came through a town. He came in a specific uh, a specific home and he said, yo, I want you to sit down because I want to wash your feet. The Messiah, the man. The, the man who gave life, snapped his fingers, take everything away, said, no, nah, I want to wash your feet. There was a woman that was a prostitute that came before him and she started to run away. He said, where are you going, child? She said, I can't be out here. I'm not supposed to be out here when there's a man at the well. He said, no, nah, come drink from this well. Matter of fact, come drink from me. I got the, ev the everlasting water. It's a lot of people out here thirsty, man. And y'all keep on thinking why you're never satisfied inside, man. Go ahead and get that, that everlasting fill of water. You're going to get that through God. And that, that's facts. That, that's facts. I'm telling you. Love it. So before we get uh, cut off by the wonderful IG. <laughs> I know. Shout out to IG for that. <laughs> Shout out to IG for allowing people like you, like yeah. us, to have yeah, this platform exactly. to share, exactly. to, to have right. these testimonies, to have these inspirational moments um, for free. <laughs> you there, you go. there you go. There you go. There you go. And so 
on the good days, on the hard days, we just want everybody to remember, kill the day. Don't let the day kill yep. you, regardless of yep. what obstacles come your way. Mm -hmm. You always have uh, um, the ability to overcome it. Like, nothing's going to come at you that you can't, you can't handle. handle. You just got to look inward and get that strength to either go mm -hmm. over it, go through it, go around it some way, somehow. Mm -hmm. So much, thank Jay, for joining thank us. You. No, thank you. Thank you, yo. We got to see everybody win. Everybody going to win. Everybody going to win. And everybody, I love you guys. I'm praying for you. I'm lo I love you. You can make it through anything, all right? Make all right. it through anything. Trust me. Uh, thanks. Appreciate it, man. Yo, peace, man. Love you guys. Stay up, all right? You too, man.